When I was first asked to speak at this prestigious conference, I thought to myself, what's a better issue to address than the driving force behind it? It all started with a concept, the concept of learning. How did we provide this? Through schooling, an institution that offers education to learners. Now this concept has existed in our region dating back to ancient times. We refer to it as al-madrasa. So education, schooling, and learning. I'm certain that each and every one of you here has their own definition of these three words, but allow me to define them from my perspective, the perspective of this generation. History shows that in this very region, as with most ancient civilizations, knowledge was deemed too complicated to be transmitted from person to person as it initially had been done, since first-hand ex experience in everyday living could not teach it in such dense quantities. As such, these ancient civilizations needed some way of preserving and centralizing formal knowledge, and hence came the establishment of al-madrasa, a place devoted exclusively to learning. But see, the concept of preserving knowledge at the time consisted primarily of memorization and the basic buildup of, say, conventional types of information. But it was this very struggle that led to the birth of progress, prosperity, and a new type of learning. Not only in the region it sprouted from, but rippled onto all other civilizations. But in that case, what is meant by education? One thing for sure is that education goes beyond schooling. Here in Jordan, Queen Rania has made it her mission to push the boundaries of education both within and beyond the classroom and facilitate a transformation in educational qualities and learning outcomes. Now, before I came here, someone very close to me gave me this piece of advice and said, your most powerful weapon is a pencil in one hand and a book in the other. I couldn't help but say no. It is what I choose to do with that book and that pencil that will be my sword and shield against the masses of destruction. It is education. For education is not merely acquiring the ability to read and write, but rather having the capacity to incorporate the mind, the heart, moral principles, values, ethics, and character all in one. Education is a process of living. Now, the reason why I managed to point this out is because I, for one, have experienced and am experiencing true education at the International Academy of Amman through the use of the IB, IB framework, where knowledge is nurtured, values are instilled, and personalities are sculptured. I learned that diversity should be welcomed, individuality should be celebrated, and creativity encouraged. Through this type of teaching, my education has been given a whole new dimension I have been boosted far with one seemingly minor action, and it is that it set the playing field for my intuitive nature. As with most young learners, determining our future is almost impossible at this point in time, but by having the opportunity to embark on a journey of self-discovery in a guided manner will undoubtedly give us the next piece of the puzzle. In my case, I've been granted the opportunity to take part very intensively in several model UN conferences, through which I am now not just only a receiver of knowledge, but also a provider of knowledge, as I am now a head teacher and a designer of the syllabus for younger MUN delegates. I'm also the social media manager of our school's very own student-run social platform, Panorama. We also have an active student council, for which I am the present elected head girl of secondary school. Not only have these opportunities given me a voice in the student community, but they've greatly expanded my horizons, giving me a taste of the real world. To add to that, I know it's a common conception almost all around the world that side hobbies should be disregarded in the last two years of schooling since there's obviously no time for them. But building on the idea of going beyond the curriculum, I've been pushed to the furthest of my abilities and even encouraged to pursue my hobbies. I've participated in several school plays and even taken on main roles. But in all honesty, I never thought that I would be able to pursue my hobby as a pianist once I reached the 11th grade. But I saw a whole new level when I was asked to train younger pianists in the school band on a weekly basis. So sure, I might spread myself amongst many activities, but 
Truth is, I'm just one example of the many IAA students. Where all these privileges and opportunities put together have taught us the true love of learning. And not necessarily learning from books, but learning from doing, learning from applying, learning from experiencing. And that's what we believe is the true meaning of education. My school and Her Majesty herself have put in so much effort to revive and reinstate the original intent of Al Madrasa. However, we mustn't disregard the force that brings us all together. I, as a learner, cannot emphasize enough on what a crucial role you play in determining the future of this world. Her Majesty once said, if there was ever a time where we were desperately in need of an educational renaissance to empower our youth, it is now. If there is a profession that can advance our future and the quality of our children's lives, it is teaching. So building on Her Majesty's words, the same way a molded vase embraces a bouquet of flowers, you as educators are molding and, embrace, molding and shaping the environment to embrace tomorrow's leaders. And that's why you're all here today to fulfill the mission of this conference and align educational priorities. I would now like to introduce the person that epitomizes the concept of education. Dr. David Howley has been holding the position as Chief Academic Officer of the International Baccalaureate since January of 2015. As an accomplished international educator, Dr. Howley has held several key positions in academic institutions all across Latin America, North America, and Europe, and has first-hand experience in the IB advanced placement and IGCSE systems. I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Howley a few days back when he was visiting the International Academy of Amman, and I must say, he's a true inspiration. So I, had, I now have the honor of introducing Dr. David Howley to the stage as our keynote speaker.